Residential Building Inspector Exam Course Preparation, Class 4, Chapter 5, Floors. R502.6, Bearing. The ends of each joist, beam, or girder shall have not less than 1.5 inches, 38 millimeters, of bearing on wood or metal. Have not less than 3 inches of bearing, 76 millimeters, on masonry or concrete or be supported by approved joist hangers. Alternatively, the ends of joists shall be supported on a 1 inch by 4 inch, 25 millimeter by 102 millimeter ribbon strip and shall be nailed to the adjacent stud. The bearing on masonry or concrete shall be direct, or a sill plate of 2 inch minimum, 51 millimeters, nominal thickness shall be provided under the joist, beam, or girder. The sill plate shall provide a minimum nominal bearing area of 48 square inches, 30,865 square millimeters. R502.6.1 Floor Systems Joists framing from opposite sides over a bearing support shall lap not less than 3 inches, 76 millimeters, and shall be nailed together with a minimum 3 10D face nails. A wood or metal splice with strength equal to or greater than that provided by the nailed lap is permitted. R503.3.2 Floor Underlayment Particle board floor underlayment shall conform to type PBU and shall not be less than 1 quarter inch, 6.4 millimeters in thickness. R506.1 General Concrete slab on ground floors shall be designed and constructed in accordance with the provisions of this section or ACI 332. Floors shall be a minimum 3.5 inches, 89 millimeters thick. For expansive soils, see section R403.1.8. The specified compressive strength of concrete shall be as set forth in section R402.2. R506.2.1 Fill Fill material shall be free of vegetation and foreign material. The fill shall be compacted to ensure uniform support of the slab, and except where approved, the fill depths shall not exceed 24 inches, 610 millimeters, for clean sand or gravel, and 8 inches, 203 millimeters, for earth. Under Floor Space R502.8.1 Sawn Lumber Notches in solid lumber joists, rafters, and beams shall not exceed one-sixth of the depth of the member, shall not be longer than one-third of the depth of the member, and shall not be located in the middle one-third of the span. Notches at the ends of the member shall not exceed one-fourth the depth of the member. The tension side of members 4 inches, 102 millimeters, or greater in nominal thickness shall not be notched except at the ends of the members. The diameter of holes bored or cut into members shall not exceed one-third the depth of the member. Holes shall not be closer than 2 inches, 51 millimeters to the top or bottom of the member, or to any other hole located in the member. Where the member is notched, the hole shall not be closer than 2 inches, 51 millimeters, to the notch. R502.8.1 Sawn Lumber Notches in solid lumber joists, rafters, and beams shall not exceed one-sixth of the depth of the member, shall not be longer than one-third of the depth of the member, and shall not be located in the middle one-third of the span. Notches at the ends of the member shall not exceed one-fourth the depth of the member. The tension side of members 4 inches, 102 millimeters, or greater in nominal thickness shall not be notched except at the ends of the members. The diameter of holes bored or cut into members shall not exceed one-third the depth of the member. Holes shall not be closer than 2 inches, 51 millimeters to the top or bottom of the member, or to any other hole located in the member. Where the member is notched, the hole shall not be closer than 2 inches, 51 millimeters, to the notch. R504.2.2 Moisture Barrier 
polyethylene sheeting of minimum 6 mil, 0.15 mm thickness shall be placed over the granular base. Joints shall be lapped 6 inches, 152 mm, and left unsealed. The polyethylene membrane shall be placed over the pressure preservative treated wood sleepers and shall not extend beneath the footing plates of the exterior walls. R506.2.3 Vapor Retarder A 6 mil, 0 0.006 inch, 152 micron polyethylene or approved vapor retarder with joints lapped not less than 6 inches, 152 millimeters, shall be placed between the concrete floor slab and the base course or the prepared subgrade where a base course does not exist. Exception, the vapor retarder is not required for the following. 1. Garages, utility buildings, and other unheated accessory structures. 2. For unheated storage rooms having an area of less than 70 square feet, 6.5 square meters, and carports. 3. Driveways, walks, patios, and other flat work not likely to be enclosed and heated at a later date. 4. Where approved by the building official based on local site conditions. Concrete floors on ground. R506.2.2 Base. A 4 inch thick 102 mm base course consisting of clean graded sand, gravel, crushed stone, crushed concrete, or crushed blast furnace slag passing a 2 inch 51 mm sieve shall be placed on the prepared subgrade where the slab is below grade. Chapter 6 Wall Construction R602.3.1 Stud Size, Height, and Spacing The size, height, and spacing of studs shall be in accordance with Table R602.3.5. Exceptions 1. Utility grade studs shall not be spaced more than 16 inches, 406 mm on center, shall not support more than a roof and ceiling, and shall not exceed 8 feet. 2,438 millimeters in height for exterior walls and load-bearing walls, or 10 feet, 3,048 millimeters for interior non-load-bearing walls. R602.6, Drilling and Notching of Studs. Drilling and notching of studs shall be in accordance with the following. 1. Notching. Any stud in an exterior wall or bearing partition shall be permitted to be cut or notched to a depth not exceeding 25% of its width. Studs in non-bearing partitions shall be permitted to be notched to a depth not to exceed 40% of a single stud width. 2. Drilling. Any stud shall be permitted to be bored or drilled provided that the diameter of the resulting hole is not more than 60% of the stud width. The edge of the hole is not more than 5 8 inch, 16 millimeters, to the edge of the stud, and the hole is not located in the same section as a cut or notch. Studs located in exterior walls or bearing partitions drilled over 40% and up to 60% shall be doubled, with not more than two successive doubled studs bored. R602.6.1 Drilling and Notching of Top Plate where piping or ductwork is placed in, or partly in, an exterior wall or interior load-bearing wall, necessitating cutting, drilling, or notching of the top plate by more than 50% of its width, a galvanized metal tie, not less than 0 0.054 inch thick, 1.37 millimeters, 16 gauge, and 1 and a half inches, 38 millimeters wide, shall be fastened across and to the plate at each side of the opening with not less than 8 10D.148 inch diameter nails having a minimum length of 1.5 inches 38 millimeters at each side or equivalent. The metal tie must extend not less than 6 inches past the opening. R602.7.4 Non-Bearing Walls Load-Bearing Headers are not required in interior or exterior non-bearing walls. A single flat 2 inch by 4 inch, 
51 mm by 102 mm member shall be permitted to be used as a header in interior or exterior non-bearing walls for openings up to 8 feet 2,438 mm in width if the vertical distance to the parallel nailing surface above is not more than 24 inches 610 mm. For such non-bearing headers, cripples or blocking are not required above the header. R602.10.2 Braced Wall Panels Braced wall panels shall be full height sections of wall that shall not have vertical or horizontal offsets. Braced wall panels shall be constructed and placed along a braced wall line in accordance with this section and the bracing methods specified in section R602.10.4. R602.9 Cripple Walls Foundation cripple walls shall be framed of studs not smaller than the studding above. Where exceeding 4 feet 1,219 mm in height, such walls shall be framed of studs having the size required for an additional story. Cripple walls with a stud height less than 14 inches 356 mm shall be continuously sheathed on one side with wood structural panels fastened to both the top and the bottom plates in accordance with table R602.31 or the cripple walls shall be constructed of solid blocking. Cripple walls shall be supported on continuous foundations. R603.9.1 Sheathing Materials Structural sheathing panels shall consist of minimum 7 16 inch thick 11 mm oriented strand board or 15 32 inch thick 12 mm plywood. R606.4.1 Minimum Thickness The minimum thickness of masonry bearing walls more than one story high shall be 8 inches 203 mm. Solid masonry walls of one-story dwellings and garages shall be not less than 6 inches, 152 millimeters in thickness, where not greater than 9 feet, 2,743 millimeters in height, provided that where gable construction is used, an additional 6 feet, 1,829 millimeters is permitted to the peak of the gable. Masonry walls shall be laterally supported in either the horizontal or vertical direction at intervals as required by section R606.6.4. R607.9 Reinforcement Glass unit masonry panels shall have horizontal joint reinforcement spaced not greater than 16 inches, 406 millimeters, on center, located in the mortar bed joint. Horizontal joint reinforcement shall extend the entire length of the panel, but shall not extend across expansion joints. Longitudinal wires shall be lapped not less than 6 inches, 152 millimeters, at splices. Joint reinforcement shall be placed in the bed joint immediately below and above openings in the panel. The reinforcement shall have not less than two parallel longitudinal wires of size W1.7 or greater, and have welded cross wires of size W1.7 or greater. R606.11 Anchorage Masonry walls shall be anchored to floor and roof systems with half-inch bolt at 8 feet on center embedded 4 inches minimum in accordance with the details shown in figure R606.11 one. R six oh six point eleven two. Footings shall be permitted to be considered as points of lateral support. R six zero six point twelve point two point three point three. Minimum reinforcement requirements for masonry shear walls. A vertical reinforcement of not less than one number four bar shall be provided at corners within sixteen inches. 406 millimeters of each side of openings, with 8 inches, 203 millimeters of each side of movement joints, within 8 inches, 203 millimeters of the end walls, 
and at a maximum spacing of 10 feet, 3,048 millimeters. Horizontal joint reinforcement shall consist of not less than two wires of W1.7, spaced not more than 16 inches, 406 millimeters, or bond beam reinforcement of not less than one number four bar, spaced not more than 10 feet, 3,048 millimeters, shall be provided. Horizontal reinforcement shall be provided at the bottom and top of wall openings and shall extend not less than 24 inches, 610 millimeters, nor less than 40 bar diameters past the opening, continuously at structurally connected roof and floor levels and within 16 inches, 406 millimeters, of the top walls. R606.12.3 Seismic Design Category D0 or D1 Structures in Seismic Design Category D0 or D1 shall comply with the requirements of Seismic Design Category C and the additional requirements of this section. AAC masonry shall not be used for the design of masonry elements that are part of the lateral force-resisting system. Exception Masonry walls limited to one story in height and 9 feet, 2,743 millimeters, between lateral supports, need not be designed provided they comply with the minimum reinforcement requirements of sections R606.12.3.2 and R606.12.3.2.1. R608.5.1.4 Proportioning and Slump of Concrete Proportions of materials for concrete shall be established to provide workability and consistency to permit concrete to be worked readily into forms and around reinforcement under conditions of placement to be employed, without segregation or excessive bleeding. Slump of concrete placed in removable forms shall not exceed 6 inches, 152 millimeters. Exception. When approved, the slump is permitted to exceed 6 inches, 152 millimeters, for concrete mixtures that are resistant to segregation and are in accordance with the form manufacturer's recommendations. Slump of concrete placed in stay-in-place forms shall exceed 6 inches, 152 millimeters. Slump of concrete shall be determined in accordance with ASTM C143. R608.7.1.1 Length of Solid Wall for Wind Buildings shall have solid walls in each exterior end wall line, the side of a building that is parallel to the span of the roof or floor framing, and side wall line, the side of a building that is perpendicular to the span of the roof or floor framing, to resist lateral in-plane wind forces. The total length of solid wall segments, TL, in a wall line that comply with the minimum length requirements of section R608.7.2.1, see figure R608.7.1, shall be equal to or greater than the product of the unreduced length of solid wall from tables R608.7 1a through 1c, ur and the applicable reduction factors, if any, from tables R608.7.2, R608.7.3, and R608.7.4, as indicated by equation R6-1.